more than halfway. Neary, I'll never make it. My tongue will be sticky for life. <laughs> You're both doing fine. And the League of Women Voters thanks you. <laughs> Phyllis, I don't know where you find the time to do this and your ecology thing. Oh, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> no? Why not? Oh, they got sort of snippy when I showed up for a rally in my leopard coat. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, it was dead when you got it. <laughs> Wasn't it? <laughs> Anyway, I, uh, glad for the extra time because this year I'm chairperson for the Concerned Democrats of Minneapolis and we're going to choose a candidate for the city council primary. <laughs> well, Phyllis, I'm really impressed. Well, I can't help being one of those people who, who does more than her share. <laughs> it's one of my greatest failings. I'm a giver. <laughs> Also a carrier. <laughs> Mary, let me ask you this. Suppose my committee wanted someone from your news department uh, to run for the city council. Like who? Oh, well, let's just say someone with the right image. Uh, someone trustworthy, a respected, uh, a father figure. You mean Mr. Grant? Someone uh, whose face is well known, uh, someone with a deep voice, uh, silver hair. You're kidding. <laughs> Why would you think I'm kidding? Hey, what? What? Well, Phyllis just said that, that she, and, and apparently she means it. You're not kidding? I'm not kidding. <laughs> that she wants Ted to run for city council. You're kidding. <laughs> I think he'd make quite a contender. Phyllis, why would anyone want Ted? You do. He does your show. Yeah, he does. And Mr. Grant drinks. Uh, Murray has an acid stomach. And I'm very nervous. <laughs> Is Ted a bad person? Is he corrupt? No. Unethical? No. Well, what? Well, what then? Phyllis, you don't know Ted. L let me try to explain Ted to you. Uh, Ted is not bright. <laughs> He doesn't have to be that bright. I'm bright. I'm bright enough for the two of us. Oh, Phyllis, Phyllis. I have enough drive for the two of us. I have enough ambition for the two of us. I have enough education. I have enough sheer concern. Then why don't you run? I don't have enough time. <laughs> Give me your honest opinion, Georgette. How was I tonight, on a scale of 9 to 10? Uh, I thought you were just marvelous. But then I always do. You know that. That's true, and I think you're on solid ground. <laughs> My friends are so jealous, they keep asking, what is Ted Baxter really like? He's just a simple reporter doing a small job, vital to the survival of democracy. <laughs> Ted, that's beautiful. It's a newsman's credo. It's on the masthead of my high school newspaper. That, along with our motto, we freely choose and have no fear. We print the news from near and far. <laughs> That's funny, I always thought that rhymed. <laughs> Get that, Ruby, honey. Hey, hi, Georgette. Hi, Ted. Nice broadcast tonight. Hi, Mary. Really good. Hope you mean it. <laughs> Lindstrom, don't you? Oh, hi, Phyllis. So nice to see you again, Ted. Thanks, Phyllis. Hope you mean it. <laughs> Can I get anyone a cream soda? Ted always has one after the show. It relaxes him. Uh, no, thank you. None for me, thanks. Okay. Now, please, sit down. What can I do for you? Well, Ted, Phyllis has this really dumb idea that... Ted, I... <laughs> I admired your editorial. It was forceful, sincere. Well, that's the kind of a guy I am, Phyllis. I can't help it. If I believe in something, I speak out. Later, if I change my mind, I'm not afraid to speak out again. If you only knew how refreshing that kind of honesty is. Still later. If I find I was mistaken to change my mind in the second place, I am not afraid to speak out yet another time. Bravo. That's the kind of man we're looking for. 
Looking, looking for, looking for what? Well, as I started to say, Phyllis has this really ridiculous idea that she... Ed, the concerned Democrats of Minneapolis want you to run in the city council primary. Oh. <laughs> I'll have to go and think about that. <laughs> I'm afraid this is distracting him. Is this distracting you, Ted? <laughs> well, we'll be quiet until you're finished. It's okay, I'm almost finished. <laughs> That's funny. Just a few moments ago, I was just the best darn newscaster in America, and now... <laughs> Now this. Ted, you can't do it. You're a Republican. How can you possibly run as a Democrat? I'll switch. What have the Republicans ever done for me? It's out of the question, so that's that. Well, I told that to Ted, Mr. Grant, but he wouldn't listen to me. Because you weren't brutal enough. That's my job, being brutal. <laughs> you see, Mary, what Ted doesn't understand is that the second he decides to run, he's no longer my anchor man. So there's no contest. He's gonna stay. Well, I'm glad that's settled. Yeah. I can just picture him out on the campaign trail, kissing hands and shaking babies. <laughs> Hi, gang. Hi, Hi, gang. The people have made their choice, and I accept. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mayor, how do you like this for my campaign slogan? From newscaster to newsmaker. Eye-catching, it's simple. Just like the candidate. <laughs> Ted, before you make any commitments, I think you ought to talk to Mr. Grant. He wants to explain a few things to you. Oh. Hi, Ted. Oh, hey. hi, Gardo. How's your new career going? Hey, the news must be all over town. Where did you hear it? You told me. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Say, so what do you think? Do you think I've got what it takes to make it in politics these days? I'm afraid so. <laughs> Thanks. Get in here. Oh, yeah, okay, Lou. <clears throat> Don't uh, talk about me while I'm gone. <laughs> Only kidding, you can talk about me. <laughs> I'm glad I caught you alone, Lou. This is probably a good time for us to have a talk. No, it isn't. <laughs> this is a good time for one of us to have a talk and one of us to have a listen. Well, uh, suit yourself, I'll be brief. <laughs> I just thought that it You're was not running for city council, Ted. It's that simple. Thank you for coming in. I'm glad we had this little chat. <laughs> you got it all wrong, Lou. I am running for city council. Let me make something clear to you. You can't be a newsman and run for office. Oh, sure I can. I'll budget my time, take shorter lunches. It's not my rule. It's the FCC. You can't do both. And if you do, I have to fire you. Am I getting through to you now? I understand that last part. <laughs> Therefore, you are not running for city council. Yes, I am, Lou. No, you're not, Ted. Yes, I am, Lou. <laughs> Comes a time when a man must do what he thinks is right, regardless of personal gain or loss. You mean that? Yes, I do, Lou. Why, Ted? I think you're sincere, but I can't figure out your motive. Well, I only ran for office once in my life, Lou. In high school, for student council. It may sound silly, but that might have been the happiest time of my life. I'll never forget how it felt to have people root for me. You win? I got clobbered. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a long time ago, Lou, before I became Ted Baxter. <laughs> I'm going to go all the way and show those people, Lou. So fire me if you want to. In fact, if, if it'll help you any, I'll, I'll resign. You're that sincere? Okay, Ted. Tell you what. You resign for now. Then later, the door will always be open if things don't work out. You mean if the unthinkable happens? <laughs> no. I mean if you lose. <laughs> All the work, everybody. I'd like to make an announcement. <clears throat> Ted has informed me of his wish 
to do something for the people of Minneapolis. Towards that end, he is resigning as our anchor man. Mr. Grant. You'll always have a friend at the city council. What happened to I there? don't know, I don't know. It was very confusing. For a moment there, he seemed to make sense. Uh, don't worry, Lou. I won't leave you in the lurch. I'll, I'll help you find a successor no matter how long it takes. Gordy. Of course, I don't kid myself. It'll be easy, but we'll stage a massive talent hunt. And I will personally screen all the candidates. And if we're lucky enough to find Mr. Wright. <laughs> yeah, Lou. You're the new anchor man. Think you can handle it? What's to handle? It's a milk run. Good. Good luck, Ted. And goodbye. <laughs> Good luck, Matt. Goodbye, Mary. Goodbye, Ted. Lou? Ted? Murray? Goodbye, Ted. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, Goodbye Ted. Ted. Well, I guess this is goodbye. 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 <laughs> so, until we meet again, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> but not, not farewell, just, just, just goodbye. <laughs> Against. I just don't think school kids should be taxed. <laughs> I mean, they've got enough to pay for. What with lunches, pencils, maybe a movie on weekends. Do you believe this? They think he's being funny, that he's witty. <laughs> he's really impressed them. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the press. That ends our conference. Well, Phyllis knows just when to get him off the hook. <sighs> Gee, Mary, I gotta admit this, though I hate to. She has got him doing a pretty good campaign so far. Boy, whoever thought that Ted and Phyllis would be working together like this? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's like they say, Mayor. Politics makes strange bedfellows. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Phyllis and Laws make strange bedfellows. <laughs> I was downstairs watching the news with Phyllis. <laughs> oh, hi, Rhoda. Nice to see you again. You're looking very nice this evening. <laughs> Thanks, Ted. Same to you. Hope you mean it. <laughs> hey, Ted, I saw the latest survey. You're really picking up. Yeah, did you notice? I just passed undecided in the polls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm my own man, Mayor. Going it alone and doing it my own way. You're six minutes behind schedule, Ted. You cannot monopolize my candidate, you two. He's public property. I was just telling Ted how nice it is to see him again. Gee, we really miss you at the station. Ted would like to see more of you, but the campaign trail is a lonely road, Mary. Come along, Ted, we're late. Well, goodbye, Mary, Rhoda. It was nice talking to you, Ted. <laughs> oh, uh, Rhoda, I want you to know that after the elections, I hope to visit Israel. <laughs> Take a message. It's so busy around here today. Okay, thank you. Oh, be darned. Ted actually has a chance to win the primary. I know. Uh, well, the city's loss will be our gain. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Frank, uh, can we get a film crew in the 11th Ward? Well, you know, just some random sampling, interviews, things like that. Hang on a minute, will you? Yeah. Oh, really? When? Well, how soon can we have that tape? Ta-da! <laughs> there he is, folks, the grand old man of the newsroom. Ah, fine. Hi, Ted. Hi, Mayor. Listen, Frank, can we get a direct line from election headquarters? The old tiger makes his triumphal return. Ah, good. Mike, will you see if we can get a feed from Channel 9? I figured you'd folks be on the guns by now and could use some seasoned help. Get me research. Hey, Murray! Well, look who's here, the Manchurian candidates. <laughs> well, I just thought I'd stop by and watch the old team get ready for the big game. Look, can you get me figures on campaign expenses so far? For background. A breakdown by candidate. You know me, the old fireman, I hear that bell and... <laughs> Thanks, Grace. <laughs> no, I'll come and get it. Uh, say, uh, Mayor. Yeah? Okay, thanks. I'll be right there. Say, Mayor, how'd that film of me at the polls come out this morning? Oh, uh, well, we're not going to use it, Ted. Why? Because it didn't look too good when they told you you couldn't vote because you weren't registered. <laughs> Big deal, so 
Oh, I forgot. They still let me pose in the voting booth. You know something? When nobody was looking, I voted anyway. Get him, Oh. Chad, what are you doing here? Oh. <laughs> Long time no see. Yeah, yeah. Should you be uh, kissing babies somewhere? Well, it's too late for that. It's up to the voters now. Uh-huh. So, what's news, big fella? Well, listen, Ted, uh, we're pretty busy around here right now. Pretty busy. Love to have a little chat with you, but why don't you drop us a line sometime? <laughs> Although it's still much too early to project a winner, a number of trends have developed which experts could not have prognosticated. <laughs> Hi, Ted. Hi, Gary. Pretty busy, huh? Yeah. Nothing like a newsroom on election day. You're telling me. You want to know something? I miss it. Oh, we miss you too, Ted. You do? Yeah. See. Your audience misses you too, Ted. Did I get any mail? Oh! Yeah, you got a lot of mail. No from kidding. People, sure. <laughs> How many? Oh, uh, 650. Whoa, no kidding. Can I see them? Oh, well, I, I don't I don't have the. Well, letters, just, just you know. show me. Tell me where well, they I are. Think, I think maybe Murray has them. I, Come uh, on, Murray. I want to see them. They're my letters. <laughs> That's only three. Well, Ted, why don't you make me show you anyway? Hey, you know what, Ted? Everywhere I go, people yell, hey, Gordy, when's Ted coming back? No kidding, they do? Yeah. Where? Everywhere. How many yell that? 650. <laughs> I mean, men or what? Women, too? Yeah, women, too. Young women? Yeah. Would you say that the women yell more often? Nobody than... yelled at Ted. They didn't yell. Nobody yelled nothing. <laughs> You make me do this. You always push too hard. Nobody yelled, huh? A few. How many? Three. I think you're the greatest, Mr. Baxter. I'll die if you don't win. Hope you mean it. Hi, Mayor. Hey, good luck tonight. Thanks. I'm not taking sides, mind you, but good luck. Welcome to the landslide. Ah, uh, Mary. Aren't you working tonight? Yeah, I am. Right here. I asked for the assignment. Oh. How are the returns? Well, I don't have the latest on Ted yet, but the party's doing fine statewide. I guess my coattails were a lot broader than some people thought. <laughs> oh, hi there. Thanks for coming. Mary, look at my face. Do you notice something? You look a little tired. My eyes. What do you notice about my eyes? Um, circles under them, a little red. Possibly. But that glow you see is the light. The light, Mary, I have seen it. This is only the very modest beginning. Today, Minneapolis, tomorrow. Well, finish it for yourself, Mary. I will, I will, Phil, but I gotta go check and make sure the crew's ready for Ted's speech. See you. Thanks for coming. Welcome to the Baxter bandwagon. Oh, Ted, I'm so proud of you, I could burst. Everybody here feels the same way. <laughs> Ted, I want you to be successful. But it makes me sad to think about you going to other places like Washington. I'm afraid you won't have any time for me. Are you kidding? When they call me up in front of those Senate investigating committees, you're going to be sitting there right there behind me. <laughs> oh, Ted, you always say the right thing. I try. <laughs> we want Baxter! We want Baxter! We want Baxter! We want Baxter! It's magic time, honey. We want Baxter! Thank you all for coming here tonight. I know you're all waiting to hear me give my victory speech, but I think it would look much better if we waited until the votes were counted. Yeah! <laughs> but when those Baxter votes start pouring in, you'll be the first to know. Yeah! We want Baxter! We want Baxter! 800 votes behind? You still have a chance. I mean, it's not over. You know, there are a couple of big precincts that haven't come in yet. You know, it's funny, the thoughts that go through your head at a time like this. I remember when I was in high school running for student council and I lost. I went home and told my mother I won. 
She was so proud. You know, to this day, she still thinks that I won. <laughs> well, I hope you win tonight, Ted. I, I really do. Thanks, Mary. I got, I got to go check with the station. I don't know what to do, how to... Ted, I don't know how to break this to you. This sounds like bad news. <laughs> we lost, Ted, we lost. Well, what about all those big precincts that hadn't come in? They came in. <laughs> We're finished, Ted. Crushed. Wiped out. Annihilated. I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> I told everybody I was going to win. So did I. I believed in us. I felt we had such bright, untarnished hopes for the future. I felt we had mountains to climb, promises to keep. But the light failed, Ted. The dream died. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> oh, we got to pick up the pieces, Ted. We've got to walk out there, our chins high, show them what we're made of. They want to hear from you, Ted. Talk to them. What'll I say? I don't care. <laughs> I could read my victory speech, but that's such a happy speech. Adapt it. Improvise. <laughs> Bye, friends. <clears throat> this is a great night. Except for me. <laughs> I humbly thank the people for their mandate. Though a victory would have been even better. <laughs> My opponent put up a good fight, even though he won. <laughs> and tonight, the people of Minneapolis have taken a great step forward. But if that's what they want, the hell with them. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. How much time have I got? Let me go back on the air five minutes. Okay. Hi, gang. Ted. Hi, Ted. Would you believe it? Some loudmouth told my mother I lost. <laughs> oh, thanks, Mary. I'll take over. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Well, you said the door was open, and you don't mind, do you, Gordy? Well, of course I don't mind. I don't mind going back to being just a weatherman. <laughs> I don't mind losing my job as the anchor man. I don't mind losing all that extra money. What makes you think I mind? See, Lou, it's okay with Gordy. I really wanted you to win, Ted. Nobody wanted you to win more than I. Nobody. Believe me. Nobody. That's touching. <clears throat> Let's see. Peterson's victory in the primary makes him a certain show in. The $16,000 a year post to city councilman from... $16,000? That's all it pays? Boy, am I lucky I lost. Can you imagine anybody dumb enough to work for $16,000 a year? <laughs> I work for less, Ted.